Hi, Mr. Richards here. Today's lesson is on mean absolute deviation. What is mean absolute deviation? It is the average distance between each data value and the mean. So we're going to be calculating a mean of the set of data, taking a look at how far each point is away from the mean, and taking the average of that. It's a way, it's another way to find variation. The table shows the admission prices at different movie theaters. Find the mean absolute deviation. Describe what the mean absolute deviation means. Well, first up, find the mean. So we'll take our $9.50 plus $9 plus $8.25 plus $9.25 plus $8 plus $8.50. And we'll divide that by the number of data values we have, which is 6. The numbers on top add to be $52.50. And when we divide that by 6, we get a mean of $8.75. So that's the mean. Step 2, find the absolute value of the differences between each value in the data set and the mean. So we'll look at each of the six data values, each of the six prices, and find out how far each of those is away from the mean. Well, if we take $9.50, the absolute value of $9.50 minus $8.75, the mean is $0.75. Seventy-five cents away, then we'll have nine dollars minus eight dollars seventy-five cents, and the absolute value of that is twenty-five cents. Next, we'll have eight dollars and twenty-five cents. So the absolute value of eight dollars and twenty-five cents minus the mean of eight dollars seventy-five cents, and that is fifty cents. Halfway there. Next, $9.25, so the absolute value of $9.25, minus the mean, $8.75, is $0.50. Cents. Two more, absolute value of $8, minus $8.75. Again, that would be negative $0.75, cents, but the absolute value of that is just $0.75. Cents. We're going to have all our answers positive here. And last but not least, Absolute value of $8.50 minus $8.75. Inside would be negative 0.25, but it's a positive 25 cents after the absolute value. So now we found the differences between each value and the mean. What are we going to do next? Find the average of these. So we'll take the 75 cents, the 25 cents, the 50 cents, the other 50 cents, another 75 cents, and our last quarter. And we'll divide that by the six data values that there are. These add up to $3. Divide by 6, and you get a mean absolute deviation of 50 cents. What does this mean mean? Well, the average distance each value is from the mean is 50 cents. So that's how you calculate mean absolute deviation. In our second example, we're going to take a look at comparing mean absolute deviations. 
The dot plots show Katie's and Danielle's resting heart rates in beats per minute at different times of the day. Find the mean absolute deviation for each set of data. Then write a few sentences comparing their variation. Well, we have Katie's heart rate on the left, Danielle's heart rate on the right, and we'll go ahead and go through our three steps again to calculate the mean deviation for each. So we'll start with Katie, and we'll start in step one by calculating her mean. We'll have 63 plus 65, 65, there are three 66's, a 70, 71, 73, and 75. And there are 10 data values there. So this would be 680 divided by 10, which is a mean of 68. Let's go ahead and calculate the mean for Danielle. Her data values look a little bit higher. We have 67, 68, there are two 70s, a 71, two 70s, two 73s, and 74. And once again, there are 10 data values there. These add up to 710. And when we divide that by 10, we get 71. So just looking at the means, Katie's mean is 68. Danielle's mean is 71. And now we get to calculate the mean deviation for both. So we'll look at the absolute values of each data set away from the mean, or each data point away from the mean. So we'll look at the absolute value of 63 minus 68, which is 5. Next we have our 65s, and we're going to write each of those individually. So we'll have the absolute value of 65 minus 68 is 3, and we're going to write them each separately. That way we don't lose track. And then we'll have our 66's. And that gets us 2. And once again we're going to write each of these here. All three of them. And then we have our 70. is 2 away. Then our 71, which is 3 away. And then 2 left, we have 73 and 75, so 73 minus 68 is 5 away. And 75 minus 68, that absolute value is 7 away. And so now that I have that, I can add these up. 5, 3, 3, 2, 2, 2, 2, 3, 5, and 7. And there were once again 10 data values. These add up to 34. Divide by 10, and you get 3 and 4 tenths. So her mean absolute deviation was 3 and 4 tenths beats per minute. Let's look at Danielle and calculate hers. So we'll start with the 67 minus 71. The absolute value of that is 4. And then we'll have our 68 minus 71, that absolute value is 3. Then we'll have our absolute value of 70 minus 71, and that is just 1. 
There's another 70. That absolute value is 1. Then the absolute value is 71 minus 71. That's kind of boring. That's just 0. Then 72. There's two of those. And both equal 1. And then we'll have our two 73s. That's 2. And then lastly, our 74. And that's 3. And so if we add all of these up, we'll have 4, 3, 1, 1, 0, 2 more 1s, a 2, a 2, and a 3. And that will be divided by 10. These add up to 17. Divided by 10 is 1 and 7 tenths beat per minute. So now we get to write our sentences about these. Well, let's start off with our answer. Katie, we had 3 and 4 tenths beats per minute. While with Danielle, we had 1 and 8 tenths beats per minute. Now we can say the mean absolute deviation of Katie's data is greater than the mean absolute deviation of Danielle's data. Then we can summarize by saying Danielle's data is closer together than Katie's data. There was less variation in Danielle's data than Katie's data. And the mean absolute deviation tells us that. Each of Katie's data points were about 3 and 4 tenths away from the mean, whereas Danielle's data points were only 1 and 7 tenths away from the mean. So Danielle's data is closer together than Katie's data. And that's how you can compare using mean absolute deviation. And that is it for this lesson on mean absolute deviation. Good luck.